Welcome to the Oasis. My name's Mike and today is a very exciting day as we're going to be talking all about the brand new Valve Index. Now this video is going to be jam-packed full of information. I'm going to briefly show you what comes in the box with the full bundle that I ordered. We'll go through the setup process to see how easy it is to get up and running with this device. I'll share some tips and tricks that I've learned about this headset already and I'll give you my first impressions throughout the video on all the different features of this headset. Now I've put timestamps to all the sections of the video in the description down below so you can jump straight to the section that interests you the most. I hope you guys and girls find this video useful and it helps give you the information you need to make an informed decision on whether this is the right headset for you. So without further ado, let's dive in. Okay, so let's quickly start by answering the question, what the heck is the Valve Index and why is it so exciting? Well, the Valve Index marks Valve's first in-house produced virtual reality headset. Previously, Valve worked closely in collaboration with HTC to develop the Vive, but this time they're breaking away and doing it themselves to produce what they're calling a best-in-class VR experience. Now I ordered the complete bundle from Steam, which includes the headset, controllers and base stations. Now this bundle set me back 919 British pounds, which equates to 999 US dollars. Now if you already have Lighthouse 1.0 base stations for tracking your Vive or Pimax, you can just buy the headset or the controllers a la carte and upgrade over time if you wish. Now there was so much stuff in this huge box, but it has everything you need to get up and running, including all the cables and local power adapters. And I'll be going in more detail with the individual components such as the headset, base stations and controllers very shortly. The setup of the Index took around 20 minutes in total, with mounting the base stations being the trickiest part of the setup, everything else is really simple. I already had brackets in place from when I was using the Vive Pro, so I didn't need to mount the brackets on the wall that were included in the box. If you don't want to mount the base stations permanently on your wall, then I'd recommend investing in some lighthouse stands. Ideally, you want to mount the base stations in opposite corners of your room, as high as possible, angled slightly down towards the floor. Now these new 2.0 base stations they have a wider tracking volume so fine tuning them may not be as necessary as it was with the original base stations. Next just simply connect the index headset to your PC using the USB 3.0 and display port connectors. You'll also need to supply the headset with 12 volts power using the supplied power adapter that comes in the box. The cable from the headset to your PC is 6 meters long which should be plenty for most setups. Once connected, just simply ensure that you have SteamVR installed and run through the SteamVR room setup. The SteamVR room setup feels a bit antiquated now compared to the simple Rift S and Quest setup using the pass-through cameras to simply trace out your play space, but it does get the job done. So now it's all set up, I can test it out with some games and give you my first impressions on the headset, base stations, and controllers. So first up, let's start with the headset and let's talk about comfort. The Index is a very comfortable headset. It uses a head strap similar in design to the Vive Deluxe audio strap with a ratchet gear system to tighten it up at the back. Overall, I actually find it more comfortable than the Rift S, which I already thought was a very comfortable VR headset. The material on the facial interface and rear cushion is a nice and soft microbial fabric and the rear section nicely cups the back of your head. The material though is glued to the facial interface and on the back so sadly it can't be swapped out easily for cleaning although the whole plastic facial interface at the front can be removed as it's held in place with magnets. You could buy a second interface from Steam if you wanted to although I'm going to wait to see what happens with third party solutions from the likes of VR Cover and Widmo VR. Valve have also included in the box a rear bumper pad that fits in the back of the headset to ensure that those with smaller heads can also get a comfortable fit. On the bottom of the headset it features a manual IPD adjustment slider which is an important feature that was lacking from both the Rift S and the HP Reverb. The index allows physical IPD adjustment between 58 and 70 millimeters. IPD in basic terms is the spacing distance between your eyes and there's a useful IPD measuring app which I'll put linked in the description down below. In terms of the display, the index uses two ultra low persistence 1600 by 1440 pixels per eye LCD panels. This is the same resolution as the Vive Pro and the Samsung Odyssey, although both of those headsets use OLED panels. 
Valve state that using LCDs provides 50% more subpixels than OLED, resulting in greater sharpness for the same rendering cost, and in addition to that, the fill factor is three times better than OLED, greatly reducing the screen door effect. Now, although screen door effect is reduced, it can still be seen if you really look for it, but it is a big step forward from the original Vive and Rift. Although the LCD display offers great clarity, it comes at the cost of slightly muted colours and dark scenes, which in my opinion is on par with my experience with the Rift S. The index also sports a slightly wider field of view of around 130 degrees due to the lenses being canted outwards by 5 degrees, offering 20 more degrees than the current Rift and Vive, although this is really dependent on how close you can dial in the lenses to your eyes. At its closest setting, the lenses feel very close to your eyeballs, but the field of view that it provides is incredibly nice. If you wear glasses in VR though, you might have to sacrifice some of that field of view to accommodate your glasses so you don't scratch the lenses. The most interesting thing about the optics with the Index is the refresh rates. It can provide 80, 90, 120 and 144 hertz. Now although the difference isn't a huge leap forward in my opinion and won't be beneficial in all games, playing Beat Saber at 144 hertz feels amazing and butter smooth. It's worth noting though that you'll need a beast of a PC to run 144Hz mode. I'm currently running an RTX 2080 Ti and was only capable of hitting that frame rate consistently with super sampling set to 1.0. Now for the not so great things about the visuals. God rays are back. Having used the Quest and the Rift S a lot over the past few months, I've become accustomed to not seeing that much glare or god rays in the headset. And using the index in dark scenes with white text or logos, you really do notice the glare, and I guess this is due to the lens design. Now you won't notice it all the time and it's by no means a deal breaker, it's just something to be aware of. Also, while on the subject of the lenses, the sweet spot is fairly small, meaning that it will take some fine adjustment to get the fit right for the best experience. And finally, the displays and the headset get quite hot. Now I'm not sure if this is just the fact that it's bloody hot here in the UK, which we're not used to at all because no one has AC here, but the front of the headset does get noticeably warm to the touch. I'll continue to monitor this as I continue to use the headset. Now the audio on the Valve Index is the best I've ever experienced on any VR headset. And audio is such an important feature for a great virtual reality experience and it's one of the biggest downfalls of the Oculus Rift S. The built-in microphone on the Index sounds great and it's perfect for me when recording VR gameplay videos. The built-in headphones are just awesome. They feature an open back design and they don't actually touch your ears at all. They just kind of hover near them. So if it's a hot day like it is at the moment, your ears aren't going to be cooking and they provide a nice deep bass which is perfect for games like Beat Saber. If you really want to, you can use your own headphones utilizing a 3.5mm headphone jack which is hidden behind the facial interface next to the headset cable and you can remove the built-in audio solution completely by just unscrewing them from the head strap. But to be honest, I don't know why you'd want to do that as really it is is amazing. The Index uses external lighthouse tracking opposed to the current trend of inside out tracking on the Rift S, Vive Cosmos and Windows MR range. The new 2.0 base stations offer a wider tracking volume and can now be paired with up to four base stations for a 10 meter squared tracking area, but of course this is going to be overkill for the average user. The tracking of the headset and controllers using these base stations is best in class, and all the small spots that can cause tracking issues on inside out tracked headsets are completely gone. Although some may see that setting up these base stations is a real pain, especially those that don't have a permanent room set up, in return you do get tracking that's practically flawless, which is worth it in my opinion. Now let's talk about the controllers. Now although they're officially called index controllers, I think I'll always refer to them as the knuckles controllers. It was such a great name. The knuckles are unique in that they're actually attached to your hands using a strap at the back, which means that you can completely let go of the grip without them falling off and making hand interactions in virtual reality feel more natural. Also the grip features individual finger tracking technology with capacitive touch sensors, meaning that the controller can track the proximity of each finger without them even touching the grip. It's very clever indeed. Along with this they also feature a grip sensor, so for example you could grip objects in game really hard and depending on how hard you grip the controller they could break in game, which is a really neat feature. 
And this is where the index really shines. The controllers offer something not available on any other platform. Now the finger tracking isn't perfect, but it works well. The middle ring and pinky fingers are tracked using the grip and the index finger is tracked using the trigger button. Now the trigger button is where things get a bit muddy for me because when you pull the trigger all the way in, it makes a clicking sound, which I really am not a big fan of. However, you do get the best of both worlds with this controller as it features a thumbstick and a touchpad, which people are referring to as the pill due to its shape. Now I've got baby sized man hands and I've had no issues with the fit as the strap can easily be adjusted by pushing it in at the top and moving it across to fit your needs. The internal batteries in the controllers can be charged using the supplied USB-C cables and provide around seven hours of battery life. You can use these controllers with other headsets such as the HTC Vive and the Pimax, and there's even a method to use them with the Oculus Rift. However, you will still need base stations to track them effectively. Cass and Chari did an excellent video guide on how to do it, which I'll link up here right now. At the front of the headset, you will see the frunk, which is hidden behind a slightly opaque panel. And the frunk is an abbreviation of the front trunk and is a unique feature of this headset, which we haven't seen before on any other headset. It's basically a slot for modders and tinkerers to make and add their own accessories. You can get to the front by simply removing the cover, which is just held in place with magnets. Just be warned though, as this cover is really susceptible to scratches. Inside the front is a USB 3.0 port, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what the community dreams up to utilize this feature. So there's my first impressions of some of the features of the Valve Index, and I've been testing it out as much as I can over the past few days, and here's a few tips and tricks that I've learned along the way that will help you get the best possible experience out of the headset, as I personally experienced a few disconnect issues, and there were times where the headset just wouldn't get recognized that it's connected by Steam VR. Since implementing these tips, everything has been rock solid. The most important tip is to ensure the Steam VR beta version is installed. All you need to do is navigate to your Steam VR library and find tools. Look for Steam VR and right click and click on properties. Click on the far right hand tab which is labeled betas and opt in to the Steam VR beta update. This will prompt a quick download and a firmware update to the headset and this should help resolve some of the common issues. Also, if you update to the Steam VR beta version, you can enable the pass through camera feature by double pressing the menu button. All you need to do to enable this is go into your Steam VR settings, click on camera and click on enable. Just like on the Oculus Rift S, this gives you an outline of the real world around you. It's quite trippy, but great for quickly seeing what's going on around you if you want to have a quick conversation with a friend or loved one. The second tip is to ensure that your USB drivers are up to date and that you disable any power management. In Windows, simply search for Device Manager. Find the USB controller that your index is connected to and right click and click on Properties. Firstly, select the driver tab and click on Update Driver to ensure you have the latest drivers by automatically searching for them. Once that's done, you can right click and select properties on any of the USB ports and click on the Power Management tab. Ensure that the box is not checked as this can allow your computer to turn off the power to that port, which can cause intermittent disconnects. The next tip is about extension cables. Now I tested the Valve Index with a six foot display port and USB cable, which I've been using on my Rift S. But for some reason, using it with the Index, it caused some snowy artifacts in the image displayed in the headset. For this test, I was using a six foot Cable Matters USB 3 cable and a Ranky six foot display extension cable. Now this isn't too much of a problem as the cable provided in the box with the Index is a decent length at six meters. Other cables may work better, but this is all I had to hand and I tested it both in 144 hertz and 90 hertz modes. If you've got any suggestions on cables that you've tested that have worked, please link them in the comments down below. Now one tool that I would definitely recommend getting is the FPS VR tool which is available on Steam. This is an overlay which is tied to the left controller, so if you rotate it down in any game or environment it will show you your frame rate, CPU and GPU usage along with controller battery life and more. It's really cheap at around three British pounds, around three US dollars, and has made finding the optimal settings for smooth gameplay very simple. I've added a link to it in the description down below. So my final tip is going to be about an application called Revive. Now this is going to be especially useful if you're upgrading from an Oculus Rift and have invested money into the Oculus ecosystem or you're just interested in some Oculus exclusive titles because let's be honest, Oculus are the ones funding the best PC VR titles at the moment. Now I've linked to the download for Revive in the description down below. All you need to do is simply download it and run the installer. Now this will allow you to play Oculus titles from Oculus Home on the Valve Index. In my test 
testing, this was a bit hit and miss. The controller mapping does work great though, and picking up items and weapons in game works as it should. Some games like Fuji just wouldn't boot at all, and to get Vader Immortal working, I had to put the game settings on low, otherwise I would experience some strange graphical artifacts. Fingers crossed this works on some of the bigger titles coming soon, like Stormland and Defector. So here's my conclusion. Ultimately, the Valve Index is the best consumer VR headset on the market right now, but the premium features and controllers come at a premium price of $999 for the complete bundle. If you've owned the original Rift or Vive and you're looking for an upgrade and have the money to burn, then I would definitely recommend the Index. Is it better than the Oculus Rift S? Yes, but it does cost over twice the amount. Is it two and a half times better than the Rift S? Well, no, I don't think so. So this decision will ultimately boil down to your budget. The Index is likely gonna become my daily driver moving forward for a few reasons. Comfort, controllers, audio, and it's easier to record VR gameplay with. The Index feels like a future-proofed headset with the different refresh rate modes. Although it will be difficult for most to push 144 hertz, maybe this will become the standard in a few years time. But for me, it's really the controllers that make this feel like an evolutionary step forward in VR, although we badly need the content to show its full potential. Okay, so there we have it, guys and girls. That's the Valve Index. In my opinion, this is the best virtual reality headset available to consumers on the market right now. It's by no means perfect, though, with its heat, uh, glare in the lenses, and high price tag. It means it's not going to be for everyone. It's a premium product at a premium price that I think VR enthusiasts are going to be very happy with. All we need now is the great games to push this amazing hardware to its full potential. Because without the great games, we just have a very fancy and expensive paperweight. So hopefully we can get more information about the first party VR games in development from Valve very soon. In the meantime, of course, we do have Boneworks and No Man's Sky to be very excited about. But let me know what you think about the Valve Index in the comments down below. Have you been on the fence about getting one or did you pre-order? Have you had one arrived already? Let me know what you think. Or do you think this headset is just way too expensive and out of your budget and you're happy with your Quest, Rift or Vive? Love to know in the comments down below. Leave a like if you like this video. Make sure you're subscribed for all my future content. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.